Hey, hey, you, you jack beans, you, you hobbit feet. Last fantasy news, I wore this tie. Everyone was saying, Daniel, where's your fantasy tie? Well, guess what? It is a fantasy tie. You just didn't see it. It's got the Game of Thrones dragons on it. See, is it my fault for not properly displaying the tie, or is it yours for not magically seeing what was out of frame? Huh? Welcome, welcome, welcome to another episode of Fantasy News. I am your host, Daniel Green, and it's a wonderful, lovely start to the day here. I'm going to be live streaming soon, but I figured I'd get a Fantasy News ready for the day after this one before we start live streaming. So buckle up, let's get ready to enjoy the fantasy news. And you know, I know we've been talking about it a lot, so we'll just get through this one pretty quickly, but we got a couple Witcher stories coming down the pipeline, and let's just go ahead and cover that the best we can. As a group, we're all in this together. I love y'all. Apparently, Witcher Season 2 is to film in the Czech Republic, Slovakia, and Scotland, which are all fairly standardish sounding places for a Witcher setting. I'm, I'm cool with all of them. That sounds great. Now, season one did already film in Slovakia for a bit, so that's probably just a continuation of things we've seen before, but Scotland, I believe they also filmed in. It's really just a continuation of like, yep, they filmed in these places, they're adding the Czech Republic, it seems, and filming. Witcher, fantasy, and in the most exciting bit of fantasy news here today, not only has Mark Hamill expressed interest in being cast as Vesemir for the upcoming Witcher season two, but the showrunner herself has said she is very interested in that happening. So the likelihood of this seems higher and higher as we get closer and closer to Vesemir making his appearance within the Witcher show. Mark Hamill is Mark freaking Hamill, and pretty much any nerdy franchise would be ecstatic to have him on board, and I'm down for this. I mean, the guy's work is legendary, not just Luke Skywalker, but Joker, for, of course. I mean, he's Mark Hamill. I don't, I don't need to explain it more than beyond that. Are we good? We're good? Let's move on. And maybe not the most exciting, but the biggest and most debatable piece of Witcher news we're going to be covering here today, it has been announced that a Witcher animated movie is being worked on. Nightmare of the Wolf. Apparently, this animated movie will explore a dangerous new threat to the continent. The project does hail from Studio Murr, who are responsible for the Legend of Korra, so in terms of animation, that's a good start, but we don't have any word on when this will be released, just that it is in now development. And in the last bit of Witcher news, it's quickie news, the Witcher soundtrack will be released the day you are watching this episode of Fantasy News. Congratulations, you get to listen to the show's legendary soundtrack, including the now instantly iconic song, according to the memes on the internet, Toss a Coin to the Witcher, to Toss a Witcher a Coin, something about tossing Witcher's coins. For those of you who are interested in writing or learning how to write science fiction and fantasy. Brandon Sanderson has also posted a new lecture on his YouTube channel. So if you want to go and see the latest on how to start this whole process from the man himself, that of course will also be linked right down below. And in, oh my God, the most infuriating piece of news for the day, are you <laughs> news? Studio Ghibli films are coming to Netflix outside of North America and Japan. So congratulations, everybody else. You get Studio Ghibli in waves on Netflix. Well, we all don't. We don't. We don't. We get it on HBO, maybe. It's not sure. It's, that'll be out. I'm, I'm fine. It's cool. It's fine. You know, it's cool. It's whatever. It's fine. Seriously, I have a VPN, though, so I'm okay. I'm just going to say I live in the UK and just watch it that way, so I'll be good. But from February 2020, 21 films from the legendary animation studio will be coming exclusively to Netflix. Sabrina season three had a trailer drop, and I'm gonna I'm gonna admit my guilty pleasure real quick. I, I've watched all of Riverdale, not Sabrina, but Riverdale's made by the same people, and I watched that show, and I was I was hooked. But for those of you who have seen Sabrina, is it worth checking out? Should I should I give Sabrina a go? Just review seasons one, two, three of Sabrina here on the channel. And in, oh, the nostalgia news, we had the final season trailer for Star Wars The Clone Wars drop on YouTube. It seems to tie in very closely to episode three, Revenge of the Sith. It's funny, I, up until recently, was thinking there's no way I can get pumped for Star Wars again. I'm just done with it. Then I saw this trailer, and oh boy, 
am I definitely not going to cancel any Disney Plus subscriptions and I'm going to watch the crap out of this arriving February 21st, we get the final installment in Star Wars, The Clone Wars. That Darth Maul Ahsoka showdown in the trailer, hot. Hot damn, hot damn. Can I get some people agreeing with me real quick that we just need Ahsoka in live action Star Wars? I know I'm not supposed to go on these tangents in fantasy news, but come on, we need, we need some Ahsoka in some live action Star Wars. I think she's great. And in some Marvel news, it's been confirmed that the sequel to Captain Marvel is in development. And in a rather odd interview, uh, George R. R. Martin admits that the final season of Game of Thrones was for a brief period of time speculated or discussed to potentially be movies. Three movies, a trilogy in fact, released in theaters. He says it was seriously discussed about four or five years ago, which that's just, of all the things to come out about season eight, this was never one I think anyone would have called. What a, what a weird, wacky turn. But uh, I'm glad this didn't happen. I would have not liked to pay more money for season eight and what that turned out to be. And in this interview, of course, he does move on to cover his working on the continuing books, saying they will happen. He says people have seen a ending. His ending will be the same, but different. The same things we've seen from George R. R. Martin repeatedly recently. But uh, yeah, this little new snippet that we could have maybe gotten the final season as movies is definitely something people will be talking about and is odd for sure. And in tabletop news, we have a Kickstarter that has gone well past its goal called Tome of Beasts 2 for 5th edition, 400 new monsters. With a goal of $30,000 as of recording this video, the backing has shot past $150 thousand dollars i'd say they're meeting their goals but if they reach 180 they're going to work on familiars which that's pretty cool you know get you some additional additional tabletop D, D stuff but if you'd like to support this you're interested in getting early access stuff with you know the stuff that kickstarter does you get things early link to everything of course right down there as well as every story i've talked about today in this video and while you're down there if you wouldn't mind leaving a like it would help me immensely and I'd appreciate you. Thank you. For those of you unfamiliar, this is just essentially giving people a huge back catalog of beasts and creatures and fun things for their campaigns they're running with their friends, pre-made in these wonderful books that you can have that are just fun resources. So if you're a tabletop enthusiast, there's, as I said, linked right down there. And in additional tabletop news, are you a Dishonored fan? Are you a tabletop enthusiast? Well, if you are those two particular things, you're probably gonna be very happy to hear that Dishonored is coming to the tabletop genre. This Dishonored tabletop RPG is being released as a giant hardback, and I'm sure will actually be a lot of fun. If I remember Dishonored correctly, those game mechanics should port over fairly effectively and quite interestingly to a tabletop RPG. The magic system there is definitely deep enough that you could do some interesting things in a campaign with, though obviously not as nuanced as some of the biggest, grandest, epicest fantasy magic systems. It's neat and has a lot of mechanics to it, so I think that'll work out pretty well. And the early reviews for Star Trek Picard are here. The first episode was released, and in general, it seems to be having a decently positive reception. People are saying it's a good show. Whether or not it's good Star Trek is a conversation I'm sure the internet will be having for quite some time. But overall, we're seeing that on Rotten Tomatoes, it's at 92%. IMDb, as of recording this, it's at a 76 and the headlines in general are fairly positive. Obviously, this is due to fluctuate. It's just first impressions, but they're positive enough to make me want to go check it out. There's one headline saying that it's bafflingly bad, but that is the only one from a reputable uh, source that I can really find saying that. So in general, it seems to be having a decently positive reception. And in the final piece of news we're gonna cover here today, The New Yorker just released a fantastic profile on legendary fantasy author N.K. Jimson. It is an absolute pleasure to read. I will link it right down below. I highly recommend you check it out because it is Phenomenal to see N.K. Jimson explored and talk about the fantasy genre with such care and interest. She's obviously someone who's made just tremendous waves in the community, and this is a wonderful profile piece. But this has been your latest episode of Fantasy News. Let me know your favorite news story of the day in the comments down below. Like and subscribe if you have not already. Hit the Patreon if you'd like to support me and what I do here, and have a good one, y'all. Peace.